All right, so let's go to activity 5.5A, CAD model, features part one. I'm going to scroll down uh, past the sleeve, which you guys did. We did the axle. You guys did the whole tool, which again, you have video to. And then we did this circular pattern one, which most of you guys did pretty good. And now we're doing this one here. Now, the reason I'm recording this lecture is because this one, um, you'll notice that if I zoom in, you're messing with some angle stuff. And we haven't really done stuff with angles too much other than just right angles. And so there's angles that you're working with, and you're working with little offsets, which um, in this worksheet here, there's it tells you you have to use the offset tool, but in on shape, we don't have the offset tool. But uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to use that. And then it's actually missing material. Like they're giving you less and less numbers to work with. And so I'm going to do my best to show you what numbers to use. So that way it looks close enough to the actual real thing. This is a part that is actually exists. It's in my classroom. It is a wheel and it begun and it belongs to those automobile blocks, which you made the axle for. This is what holds this wheel in place. So with that said, we're going to start here where it says edit um, a sketch to create the geometry using internal rib, using the concentric lines um, in the trim tool. So anyways, fancy words here. So it says here, if we look closely, that we have three circles. Now, all these circles are sharing the same radius, meaning they're all right in the center. They're concentric. Our concentric circles share the same radius. They're all different radiuses, but they share the same one on the, in the middle. So in this case, the outermost circle here, if we look at the arrows, which is pointing right there, is 1.65 inches in diameter. It's a very small wheel. And uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Again, this is the outcome. So I'm going to create a brand new one. New document, I'm going to call this wheel. Click OK. Uh, um, assignment again does not tell you that it is a metric, so I'm going to stick to the inches. I'm going to create a sketch on the front view. And I'm going to create my circle. So we said it was 1.65. So 1.65 inches in diameter. So clearly I need to zoom in now. And you'll know that right off the bat, there are two more circles along the inside. So there's one about here and there's one about there. All right, now let's look at the worksheet here. The worksheet shows, and it's kind of confusing, so let me go see if I can zoom in a little bit more. You will see that the distance between the outside circle to the inside is 0.1 inches. Now, this number could be a little deceiving at times because you're like, oh, it's only 0.1 inches, so I could just make this 0.1 smaller, so it should be 1.55. That is incorrect. Keep in mind that this is 0.1 inches here. It is also 0.1 inches here. Does that make sense? It, it's um, it's actually 0.2 inches. So if you wanted to manually make the circle and just type in the number, then it's actually going to be 1.45. And so, but we don't have to do that. We can just tell it, you know what? The distance between here and here is 0.1. And the distance between here and here is 0 0.03. So let's do that. Dimension tool. So from here, notice I clicked on both circles. I'll just put 0.1. The distance between here and here is 0 0.03. Here we go. Let's keep going. This is the part where it's a little difficult. This is why we're recording this. It says here that these lines are going to start at the radius and we're going to go out four directions in each side. The problem is, is that it doesn't, there's no way for you to type in a degrees. All right, so instead, what you need to make is a line up the center here and then compare an angle, and then you should be able to tell it. And I'll show you what that means. So I'm going to grab my line tool, and I'm going to make this a construction line. And I'm just going to start here. And again, I'm just going to go straight, just straight up, all the way up to there. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be that tall. I could be literally this tall. It doesn't matter. But I'm just doing that so you guys can clearly see it. Once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and grab my line tool, and I'm not going to be using a construction line. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the center again, and it shows you that this line is going to lock in at the second circle, right? 
So that one's going to go up to there, and I'm going to make another one that starts in the center here and goes up to about there. Now I can use my dimension tool. All I have to do is click on one of the lines and then click on the other line, so in this case my construction line, and you'll see that you can specify degrees. Now, if you go too far out, you don't have to specify that degrees, but if you go in between the two lines, you can specify the degrees in between. So in this case, we wanted four degrees. And we need to do this for the same thing for this line here. We don't want this one to be nine, we want this one to be four degrees. Once you've done that, now you can trim away and delete some of these lines. So I do not need this construction line. So go ahead and I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to trim away this line here and this line right there. All right, I don't know why there's a line here, so I'm going to trim that away. And you'll see this little rectangle is actually has, uh, like it's like a tooth. It's not like a straight rectangle. It's a tooth shape. All right, so... I think I jumped a little ahead here. On this instruction, it says trim off the rest. I am not going to trim off the rest because on Onshape, this method actually works a little better by just leaving that, all right? If I scroll down, it says you're going to extrude the big circle 0.4 inches, all right? And actually, I think that's pretty much where almost all of the, the numbers end, except for the repeated pattern. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to rotate this, and I'm going to hit extrude. And I'm going to extrude that circle right there. And it's going to be symmetrical. So it's going to extrude. So first, let me change this to 0.4 inches. 0.4. And instead, I want it to go symmetric. So it's going to go 0.2 in both directions. 0.2 this way, 0.2 this way, equaling the 0.4. Once you've done that, then now you can click OK. But you'll see that the tooth is gone. And so what do I got to do to bring the tooth back? Well, I could just go back to sketch number one and click on the little eyeball, and now it's visible again. We can reuse the sketch. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit extrude again. But this time, I'm going to extrude the little tooth here. I'm going to click on the tooth, and you'll see that by default, it wants to do one inch, which is clearly way too big. I'm going to change this to 0.3. Now, this number is not on the instructions, right? It is one number that it, they don't tell you, and instead you're supposed to kind of make a judgment call to see how close you can get to it. So 0.3 is the number that looks the best, at least over the years that I've noticed. The problem is, is that once again, it's coming out this way. You want to be symmetrical. There you go. Now that you've done that and you hit OK, You'll see that you have this tooth along the inside, and now you didn't have to extrude cut any of these outside things. So this is convenient. Now we need to go ahead and pattern this. But in order for you guys to pattern these teeth along the inside, well, you need an axis. And like in previous assignments, in order to get an axis, you have to use the mate connector here. I'm going to click mate connector. And as long as you click along the inside of the, the cylinder here, the wheel, um, and you just click, you'll see this um, little symbol pop up. So I'm going to just hit OK. Now I can just go ahead and pattern it. Patterning is something that you guys have done multiple times by now. It's right here. I want a circular pattern. And the first thing I want to do is tell it, well, what do I want to pattern? Well, I want to pattern this little rectangle, but it won't let me click on it. Right? So that's because it wants to click on the whole circle. Instead, you want to pattern a feature. Well, what feature do you want to pattern? That extrude right there. I want to pattern that rectangle. So I'm going to click it here, or you can click it here. It's up to you how you decide to do it. I click it here, this just because. And then when it asks for an axis of pattern, I click on axis, and I click on that mate connector. And then I can go ahead and tell it 15 times. See that? Now you have all these teeth along the inside. It automatically calculated the distance between them and the degrees, and it did it for you. So and in case you guys were wondering, how in the world did you know it was 15 times? Um, it tells you right there, 15, and it goes all 360 degrees. Um, and then all I have to do after that is add this little rib along the inside, which is what we're going to do after this. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit Extrude one more time. 
This time I'm going to extrude the inside lip here. Notice that everything gets selected except for this little gap here. That's totally fine. I'm going to click on this. Um, once again, this is way too big. I'm going to change this to 0 0.03. And then I'm going to make sure, once again, it is symmetrical. So now it goes 0, 0.0 or half of that 0 0.015 this way, 0 0.015 this way. And I'm going to hit OK. Once you guys have done that, then you have your final complete part. All I'm going to do now is turn off the sketch, all of these planes, the origin, and the make connector. And you'll see that you have your wheel. All right. Again, this wheel exists. It's in my classroom. I wish it were in my classroom so I could show you what it looks like. It's green. But that is essentially a whole part. All right. There's nothing much to it. It's just, again, extruding symmetrical. It's kind of um, doesn't come naturally to everybody in the beginning. The angles is the main reason I did this. But uh, aside from that, the part itself does not take very long. And so I just want to make sure that you guys are good. So. Any questions? No? All right, so let me go ahead and stop recording.